When God gives you the signals, he is trying to communicate some important information to you about the things that are happening in your life and probably certain decisions you are about to make. You are not supposed to struggle with the words of the Lord to you. If God says yes, then it's yes. If he says otherwise, you should accept it as such. No matter what the Lord is saying, even if it contradicts your wish and desires, you have to go with it because he has your best interest at heart. The Lord knows the best option for you and he has the best plans to give you the best life. For the human standpoint, you might have done your best, given it your all, and nothing seems to be changing or going the way you want. You are probably at your end's wit. Maybe you think you have reached your limit and you are just about giving up. Take a little step back and reconsider. What is God actually saying about that situation and specifically about that person? Are you thinking that person is not worth your time and life? Does your plan involve letting go or giving up? Why not listen to what your creator has to say? This is when your faith in him would be tested. When your will is going contrary to God's, would you choose to submit and do what he is saying instead? Now, remember God is omniscient. He knows all things. He has seen the end from the beginning and he knows the beginning from the end. In between those times, he is there as well. There's no greater fortune teller or seer in the whole of the earth. So you had better listen when he says not to give up on that person. No matter what you are seeing now, know that it is just for the present time. Indeed, you are not happy. But have you forgotten that God led your path in the beginning? If you began with his voice, how come you want to continue the journey on your own? Do not be deceived by the devil and his lies. He will give a thousand reasons to back out and give up. Do not listen to him and choose instead to trust the voice of God and his plans for your life. You are going to see three reasons God does not want you to give up on that person no matter what seems to be happening. Number one, deliverance from destruction. Sometimes when you see people misbehave, it is not just them, but the spirit of the devil trying to destroy their lives. Have you ever wondered why a child from a rich home will still go out to steal other people's belongings? Have you wondered the reason people whom God has blessed with beautiful and great partners still indulge in extramarital relationships and most likely with someone with fewer virtues? Even though these things seem pleasurable at first, you discover that the offender is usually stricken with guilt and they are remorseful afterwards. Despite this, they still go back to the crime as though drawn by an invisible force. This is evidently the devil at work, and his aim is to eventually destroy that individual's life. You probably have such person in your life. They are not supposed to act the way they do. They have been corrected several times, but are not yielding to correction, and they are not changing or trying to put away their bad lifestyle and attitude. You cannot just blame them for it. They might have no inkling as to the forces that are contending for their lives and trying to destroy their destinies. Ephesians 6.12 Tell us, for we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits, who are the world rulers of the present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. No one wants to be naturally bad or treat others wrongly. That person, that child, those women or that man is not just acting that way out of their own will, but because they are under an influence that is trying to move them out of the plans of the Lord for their life. This is where you come in. This is the reason God does not want you to give up on that person. We belong to a kingdom where we do not give up on people, no matter what the situation 
and the circumstances are with them. Look at Christ as our perfect example. Despite the several rejections, the suffering He took for our sakes, and all the sacrifices He had to make on our behalf. He still doesn't give up on us. In fact, He is standing as a mediator and an advocate always pleading our case before God the Father. Do you see that you are not supposed to give up? You are not allowed to let go and abandon that person despite what is happening around them. There is always hope for that person as long as their lives exist. There is always light at the end of the tunnel for that person. God is trying to tell you that you do not have to give up. Do not give up because there is nothing God cannot change about that person. As a child of God, a compassionate, loving child of the kingdom, what are you supposed to do? You fight for that person. You stand in the gap for that person because the battle against that person is not what they can fight alone. They need your support and love. Stop the complaints and the criticisms. Start showing them love, the God kind of love. Pray for them and encourage them instead. That is one reason God has placed you in their lives. You have to fight intercede for them and do not stop until you are victorious. Do not be the kind of person that stays only when things are good and looking up. This is a test of your love for that person. You have got to support them through those trying times. They cannot see God directly, but they can experience His love through you. Love just as Christ loved you. That is the instruction from the Bible. It could, be, it could be their economy that is being attacked. It could be problems with certain addictions. It could even be a rebellious child going through the adolescent phase. Or maybe peer pressure. Whatever the problem is, you have got to let them know that you've got their backs. And you're in it together. God has probably called you for the deliverance of that person, knowing that they have a glorious future ahead of them. Don't give up now, and you will see their lives becoming a testimony through which others are encouraged. Number two, because they need you. Sometimes we are too obsessed with ourselves that we do not even think about the impact of our life on others. In life, the concept of interdependence can never be taken away because nobody can live alone unless the person is a beast or a god. As long as they are human, they will always need someone to relate with. You must know that when God wants to bless someone, or whenever God wants to do something good in a person's life, He introduces someone into their life. God has brought you into that person's life for a particular reason. Do you not know you are supposed to be a blessing? Do you not know that God is using you for that person? It is for this reason that he is saying you do not have to let go and telling you not to give up on that person because you have not accomplished the work you are supposed to do in their life. You are an essential commodity that people around you cannot do without. You must know this and operate according to the understanding that when you leave people's life, you are creating a blank space, a void that is possible for any person to fill, whether good or bad. God knows what He has deposited in you. God knows what He has blessed you with. That is the reason God is very particular about you not leaving that person or giving upon them. Do you not know that God does not quit, that He does not let go, no matter the distance and the hindrances, God will always come to get that person. There is no wall God cannot kick down. There is no mountain God cannot climb to ensure that He gets a hold of a person. Now, if God shows such an attitude towards you, you as a child of the Lord have to be responsible for those that God has placed under your watch. No matter the difficulties and challenges that you are seeing, you do not have to give up, and even if you have to make a move, it is to move to the Lord for help. You will receive help, 
and ideas on how to accomplish what God has asked you to do in that life. They need you around and in their life. God has planned for you to be a blessing to them. And that is the reason God is saying you should not give up on them. Number three, there is a breakthrough coming on the way. You cannot see beyond what your physical eyes or even spiritual eyes can behold. But the God that sees all things and even searches the darkest things of the heart has seen that breakthrough and blessings are coming on the way and the devil wants you to miss out from it. Yes, you have invested so much in that person. You have tried all you can. You have supported and done many things together to see that the blessings come and now that the breakthrough is about coming, the devil brought up unnecessary attitude to make you feel disgusted and irritated and in the end leave that person. You have worked and you deserve the blessings with that person. The devil plans to make you lose in the game, lose in the fight, to make you regret and cry. But God in His grace does not want you to lose because He has prepared some great blessing for you. God is a winner and that is the reason He does not quit. And for you to enjoy the blessings that God has prepared at the end of the run, you do not have to quit or give up. Those that quit do not win and those that win do not quit. God is saying for the sake of the breakthrough that is coming on the way, because of the blessings that are closer already, you do not have to give up on that person. Though the situation may be embarrassing and bad now, but it is not enough reason to let go. It is not enough reason to give up and quit on that person. Do you not know that it is when it becomes tough, when the heat and pressure are high, that you need to increase your boldness and courage to stand. It is a fight to finish. It is a testimony or nothing. You can do it. You can change that life. You can be impactful and be a blessing to that person because that is what God wants you to be. Have you prayed? Keep praying and don't get tired. Let your prayers be felt in that life such that God will be the voice of your prayer. Change everything that is not going well in that person's life. The reward is for only those who stand till the end. Do not give up. The best is yet to come.